Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we're going to review the constellation known as Canis Minor. It's a really easy constellation to point out, and it really only consists of two stars within its pattern. When I was learning about Canis Minor, I was really surprised at the depth of the amount of mythology stories that go along with this tiny constellation. So let's get started. If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about all new videos. If you'd like to learn about the sky in greater detail, be sure to visit my website. I've got some freebies for you to download as well as online lessons and classes for you to experience. So be sure to check them out. Canis Minor is represented as the lesser dog, which means it's one of the hunting dogs of Orion, the smaller one in fact, and it is classified as an ancient constellation. The earliest records date back as far as ancient Babylonia, and it's been recognized in many cultures throughout human history. The name Canis Minor is Latin for lesser dog, and it's recorded as one of Ptolemy's 48 constellations in the second century. So as you're looking at this picture right here, Canis Minor is this simple two-star constellation. Down here is Canis Major, which has the brightest star in the night sky known as Sirius. I have a whole video about Canis Major, so be sure to go click on that video to learn more. So when can you see Canis Minor? Canis Minor is best seen in the winter months in the northern hemisphere, and the way to find it is to use the shoulder stars of Orion to point to Canis Minor. We'll show, I'll show you that later in the video because Orion is not pictured here, but it's easy to find because it's this simple two-star constellation. And more importantly, it's part of something called the Winter Triangle Asterism. Now, asterisms aren't true constellations, but really patterns within constellations or a connection between bright stars. And we use these asterisms to help us point out other star patterns in the sky. So the bright star in Canis Minor is known as Procyon or Procyon. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I kind of bounce back between those two pronunciations. But Procyon and, Can and Sirius and Betelgeuse, those are the three points of the Winter Triangle. And it's really easy to point out these three stars, especially if you live in an area with lots of light pollution, because these stars are really bright. Now let's take a look at the star pattern that Canis Minor makes across the sky. Here we have the official star map of Canis Minor, and as you can see, it's a really tiny constellation. It doesn't take up much space in the sky, and it only has these two stars in its pattern. And I also want you to notice that this star right here, the alpha star, Procyon, is really bright. You can see the magnitude scale right here. So let's get some practice with how to identify this in the sky. So as you're taking a look at this photo, there's some familiar constellations you might see, one of which is Orion. And Orion is such an important constellation because it points to so many other star patterns in the sky. And you can use Orion to point towards Canis Minor. So if you use the two shoulder stars, just draw an imaginary line through them and it'll lead you right to Canis Minor. And in fact, like I said, you can use Orion to point to all the constellations that surround it. Orion can be used to point to Gemini, Auriga, Taurus, Canis Major, and Canis Minor. So let's see if we can get some more practice here. Now, as you're looking at this photo, you won't see Orion here, but you can see some of the other constellations that surround it, one which is Gemini. Gemini is one of those few constellations that actually looks like what it's supposed to represent. I'm sure as we're going through this video, you're wondering why in the world did people identify this as a dog? It's only two stars. Well, I'm sure the ancients had lots of imagination. Um, and re remember, these, these star patterns were really created as a way to keep track of time for agricultural purposes. And then they also connected it with stories, and those stories would be passed down throughout generations. So as we're passing these stories down, it's a way to remember 
these star patterns and the times of years, the time of year in which they would rise. So if you're looking for that two star pattern, this is Canis Minor right here. If we were to point out all the constellations, we have Cancer right here. You can use Canis Minor to help you find Cancer. And then over here is Auriga. And as I said earlier, Canis Minor is part of the Winter Triangle Asterism. So if you're looking at this photo, can you point out the Winter Triangle? Make a connection with the brightest stars in this photo, and that is the Winter Triangle. And Canis Minor is a part of that. We have Orion right here. We have Canis Major, which you're really only seeing a tiny portion of it and then right here is Canis Minor and that's where that two star constellation is. Canis Minor is also a part of the winter hexagon asterism. So this is a much larger asterism that can be seen in the winter months in the northern hemisphere and it connects the brightest stars of six different constellations. Sometimes I find this a uh, challenge to point out because if I don't have a view of the entire sky, I'm not really going to be able to connect these stars. Sometimes I've got like a mountain in the way, or I've got, I'm surrounded by trees, so I can't really see the entire sky. Um, I have a whole video about asterism, so you might want to go check that one out as well. But if we were to connect the brightest stars, this is what we have, and those stars are Pollux, Capella, Aldebaran, Rigel, Sirius and Procyon and all the constellations that are associated with the winter hexagon are circled here and Canis Minor is a part of that. So this two star constellation is really easy to find. You might also be able to point out the winter triangle. I myself think the winter triangle is much easier to point out in the sky. One, because it's smaller and those really are the brightest stars in, uh, the, in the winter. I also sometimes use star trail pictures to test my students if they really know their stuff. So star trail pictures are made when you keep the shutter of your camera open for a period of time. And then what we see is the rotation of the earth recorded on film. And that's what these lines are. These are just stars that are traveling over the course of the night. But here you can, I challenge my students, can you find Canis Minor? I definitely can. Here you can see Orion. How do I know? Because it's got those belt stars right there. So if you know this is Orion, you figure this is part of the Winter Triangle there and there. So Canis Minor is this area of this picture. So I really use, I love using these star trail pictures to test my students. Can you find the pattern within these longer trails? Um, just something cool to try um, if you have the opportunity to look at different star trail pictures. Let's take a brief look at some of the mythological stories that are connected to Canis Minor. So Canis Minor is often connected with Orion as being one of his hunting dogs. And when Orion was killed by the goddess Artemis, his body was placed in the sky along with his faithful hunting dogs. In Greek mythology, we also see some stories of Mira, a loyal dog of the unlucky winemaker Icarus. Icarus was killed by his friends after they mistook his drunkenness for a murder attempt, and then Mira was able to help his daughter find his body. But we actually see records of Canis Minor in from ancient Mesopotamia. So these two stars were listed in the ancient Babylonian star catalogs that date far back as 1100 BC. We also see Canis Minor recorded by Ptolemy. Uh, Ptolemy wrote his book, The Almagest, in the second century, and this was a really important textbook for many scientists and mathematicians for, for over 800 years. We see records of Canis Minor in Egyptian mythology. He was considered to be Anubis, who is the jackal-headed god of death. We see the Polynesian cultures acknowledge Canis Minor, although their constellation looked different in terms of the pattern. But Procyon, the brightest star, was definitely used to help navigate across the Pacific Ocean. And what we're looking at here is the Polynesian Triangle. And these um, Polynesian navigators use stars in order to find their way across the Pacific, which I find amazing. And then finally, we see Canis Minor in Aztec culture as well. 
these stars were incorporated along with Orion and Gemini in an asterism called the water. So Canis Minor is seen throughout human history. It's just shape and pattern and stories have changed over the years. And remember, there's no one true mythology for any constellation. There's just a variety of them. Finally, we'll take a look at some of the celestial objects that are seated in the boundaries of Canis Minor, but unfortunately, there isn't really much to see here. There are no major celestial objects in Canis Minor. You would need a whole lot of magnification to see any of the distant objects that are located here. So we've come to the end of our video about Canis Minor, the lesser dog, so let's review everything we learned so far. It's best seen in the winter months, and it's classified as a seasonal constellation. The best way to find it is to use the shoulder stars of Orion. You go from the star Bellatrix to Betelgeuse to Procyon, and you can only really see one part of, of Orion right here. This is Betelgeuse, that orange-type star, and you just draw a line to help you find that small two-star constellation. The brightest star of the pair is Procyon, and in terms in terms of celestial objects, there really are none that are easy to find. But Procyon is part of the winter asterism triangle, so you should easily be able to connect the dots of these three stars, even if you live in an area with lots of light pollution, because these are the brightest stars that are in the winter sky, so you can make those connections and help you find this star. So I wish you luck finding Canis Minor. To me, it's one of the easier constellations to find because one, it's only two stars, and those stars are fairly bright, um, of low magnitude, which means, remember, with magnitude, the lower the magnitude, the brighter it is. So it's an inverse relationship. So as you go outside, just remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to study the stars. It took me over a decade to really, really know what I was looking at. So my hope with creating these videos is to help you find these faster and easier. So I wish you clear skies and keep looking up. Thank you.